Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today's video will be all about how I was able to grow my relaxed hair down to my waist and the top 10 reasons why your relaxed hair may be breaking and why you just never had any luck with relaxed hair and you couldn't figure out why I'll be explaining that in this video today. This video is also sponsored by the makers of ORS. If you have watched any of my videos about my relaxed hair, you'll know two things. One, that I am not a product junkie and two, the only products that I have ever featured in my YouTube videos have been from this brand, not even on purpose. Like I wasn't sponsored by them in the past, but I genuinely do use like their products all the time because they're cheap, they do the job. These have been my go-to and products that I would recommend to anyone. The thing about growing long relaxed hair is it's all about what you're actually doing to it more so than buying all of these expensive products. Your regular basic products that you can pick up from Walmart do the job. In one of my videos where I was talking about how I take down my protective styles and I was showing these products that I use, someone was like, oh, this just goes to show that you don't need to spend a lot of money to have long hair. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly, I was like, that wasn't the point of that video, but it's very true. So now I'm going to get into the 10, top 10 reasons that your hair, or if you had relaxed hair in the past and it just broke off, these are the reasons why I believe your hair wasn't able to grow these things have actually been from my own experience, things that I realized weren't allowing me to retain as much length, things that I've noticed my close friends and family doing, things that I've noticed that are common things that we might not realize are having a big impact on our hair and are the reasons why our hair is breaking. The first reason why your hair may be breaking is because you're doing too much. Like this is something that I definitely struggled with before I started getting into protective styling and all of that. But like, you don't have to do so much to your hair. Your hands don't need to be doing something new to your hair. Even if you're doing healthy things, like say today you wash your hair and you deep condition and then you leave your hair out. Tomorrow you style your hair. Then the next day you deep condition again. And the next day you apply a protein treatment. And the next day you style your hair in a different way. And the next day that, so every day you just keep on doing more and more things to your hair. Even though a lot of those things may be good things, but you're just having your hands in your hair too much. And you're causing way, way, way too much manipulation to your hair by just doing a lot of things to your hair. Even if those things are a good thing. If you did a protein treatment or deep condition two days ago, you don't need to do it again. You don't need to put your fingers through your hair to apply the product to do this and that. Just leave your hair alone. You don't have to do so much. You're doing the most. The second reason kind of ties into that, but the second reason is you refuse to protect your style. I know like in some of my videos, people comment, they'll be like, uh, another video about protective styling. Is that all you ever talk about? It's what I talk about because it's what has allowed my hair to grow. So that's what I will continue to talk about and continue to stress. If you want to grow your hair long, you have to be willing to put your hair in a protective style, at least for a few months in the year. And there are different levels of protective styling, even like literally a bun that you keep in your hair for like a few days without taking down and recombing is a protective style. And I have a video on the different types of protective style, being like refusing to protective style, thinking that I can grow my hair in other ways. While it is true, protective styling is honestly the easiest, literally you don't have to do anything, <laughs> the easiest way to grow your hair and retain as much length as possible. The third reason why your hair may be breaking, which is a very big reason, is your hair is way too overprocessed. By overprocessing your hair and having hair that is overprocessed, you're already at a disadvantage from other people who have hair that isn't overprocessed. If the same section of hair has gone through a laxer treatment like two times because of you just going way too far down with your laxer, your hair is so much more damaged and so much more weaker and you don't even realize it. And that is the reason why your hair just seems so much weaker than even other people who have relaxed hair. Whenever a lot of people apply relaxer, it's like it's smooth all the way up to where it bunches together right here. That means you're going from here all the way here. That's like at least an extra two or three inches of new growth 
or of growth that isn't new that you're over applying your relaxer to you would have had to stretch for like a year for you need for your hair to need that much relaxer you are already at a disadvantage from the beginning by having hair that is way too over processed so be mindful of how far you're going down when you are retouching your new growth and if you're not the one applying the relaxer yourself be mindful of how the person who's applying your relaxer is applying your relaxer for you the fourth reason why your hair may be breaking is this is a very big one that you may very well be guilty of is combing your hair when it's wet i know if you have friends family who are natural combing natural hair whenever it's wet is actually very beneficial the hair is a lot less hard easier to manage and all of that but combing relaxed hair when it's wet is a big big no no the first thing i realized when i stopped detangling my hair whenever it was wet is that it's actually much easier to detangle relaxed hair when it's dried with product in it with some type of leave-in conditioner with something that is allowing it to have some slip but another thing is whenever your hair is wet it is at its weakest state and if you are manipulating your hair while it's in that state it's inevitable that you're gonna have breaking all of that can be avoided if you just detangle your hair whenever it's dry sixth reason why your relaxed hair may be breaking is kind of related to the fifth one but it is because you are not detangling your hair to the best of your ability before you wash it or relax it this is something i was super super guilty of especially when i had a lot of new growth i was like i'm not gonna go through and try and detangle this i'm just gonna deal with it afterwards you don't want to have to be detangling your hair while you're in the shower similarly with relaxing you don't want to allow your hair to have all of those chemicals in it and also be wet and that's the time when you decide to start detangling your hair another reason why your hair may be breaking is because of something very very simple that some of us just neglect to do which is sleep in a satin or silk bonnet cotton is rougher than silk or satin it literally makes your cuticles roughen up and just come up and sometimes even chip off and this isn't something that i'm just like thinking about people have actually tested this where they have looked at people who slap slept in um, a satin bonnet or a silk bonnet even looking at people who always sleep on the right side of their head and testing their hair on the right side versus the left side and those those people didn't sleep in a satin or silk bonnet the right side of their hair had the cuticles whenever they looked at them like through imaging did not look as healthy and it looked more damaged than the other side of the hair simply because they were rubbing up against their hair on that side with a pillow. The impacts are very, very real and you are protecting your hair a lot by sleeping in a bonnet. And not only sleeping in a bonnet, don't just like have your hair like this and then put it in a bonnet. At the very least, put it in a ponytail. But what I recommend is to just wrap your hair because whenever your hair is either in a ponytail or wrapped, it reduces the amount of friction from your hair rubbing against itself so you don't have to wake up with your hair being too tangled another reason why your relaxed hair may be breaking is because you are seeing that every time you wear your relaxed hair out it must be flat ironed i realized that when i just wrap it every night simply that is enough to allow it to become straighter and a little bit flatter and flatter but at the end of the day relaxers do damage our hair and adding on that more damage from the heat is just asking for a disaster especially if you are flat ironing your hair every single time you wear your relaxed hair out ninth and i think this is a pretty big reason that people don't really consider but the ninth reason why your relaxed hair may be breaking is because you don't know how to handle two textures you don't know how to handle new growth but at the same time you want to stretch your relaxer. There's a lot of talk about people saying stretch your relaxer, stretch your relaxer, stretch your relaxer. But if you don't know how to take care of your new growth and you're stretching your relaxer, the benefit that you may have gotten from stretching your relaxer is all erased by the damage you're doing to your hair by trying to detangle the new growth that you just don't know how to take care of. Take your time to learn how to take care of two textures. For me, that came with just being able to be more patient with my hair. Mindset switch that like, oh, it's okay. It's gonna take me forever to detangle my hair, but I have to be careful with it if I have a lot of new growth. Then I was able to stretch for longer periods of time. But if you're the type of person who doesn't 
necessarily know how to take care of their new growth, isn't willing to put in the amount of time, why are you stretching for five months? Also, all of the benefits that you may have gotten from stretching can be completely erased anyways if the person applying your relaxer or if you're the person applying your relaxer goes down too far. You don't even have to stretch for that much if you're just more careful about how far down you apply your life. Back at the beginning of my hair journey, I didn't even know that the bit, the reason why you're supposed to stretch your hair is so you don't risk overlapping it so that you have more new growth so that whenever you apply your relaxer, there's a lot of new growth for you to apply it to. I just thought it was good to stretch simply because it was good to stretch. Everyone just told me to stretch. But no, the reason why you're stretching is to help the relaxer process run a little bit better so you're reducing the risk of how much overlap you're having but if you're having overlap anyways and you're stretching and then on top of stretching you don't know how to take care of your new growth all of these things that added up is just a recipe for disaster so one take the time to know how to take care of your new growth because i definitely think it's a good thing to stretch but if you don't know how to take care of your new growth stop stretching for so long and make sure that your relaxer application process doesn't go too far down. Try your very, very hardest to find someone that doesn't overlap and then you don't even have to stretch for as long if it's something that you just don't know how to handle. Eventually you should learn how to stretch for longer but if you're at the beginning stages of your hair journey, take your time to learn that and don't mess up your hair in the process of learning that. Okay, so now we are to reason 10 of why your relaxed hair is breaking. This is a pretty big one to me and it kind of has to do with the ninth one that I just talked about, but it is because you assume that because you are relaxed, you don't have to do as much as someone who is natural or in general, you don't have to do as much to your hair to help it grow. You think that because your hair is relaxed, you have it all the way completely easy, you should not have to struggle. While a lot of us do like relaxing our hair because it is easier to maintain on a daily basis, in terms of being able to grow your hair long, I personally think it takes just as much work as natural hair. And while yes, natural hair is more work to deal with on a daily basis, to grow relaxed hair long, it still takes a lot of work and a lot of intent and a lot of babying your hair, taking care of your hair, especially when you have new growth. And in general, just being able to be gentle and care for your hair. It's not going to be something that you just relax your hair and it's good to go and it'll just be growing freely. You get out what you put in. And if you're not putting in a lot, you're not going to get out a lot. It's just that simple. So that is definitely a big thing that a lot of people tend to forget and don't necessarily want to admit to themselves that yeah, relaxed hair still at the end of the day is work if you want to grow it long. This was a very interesting video to put together and come up with this list. Because like I said before, most of these are from my own experience is that I didn't really think I was doing wrong, but now looking back, I'm noticing the very simple things that once you make the switch, you will notice a difference in how much your hair is breaking. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Those are my 10 reasons why your relaxed hair is breaking. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Your hair is stuck at a certain length. It happens to, I feel like, almost all of us at some point in our lives. It definitely happened to me where my hair just didn't, wouldn't want to grow past shoulder length.